Okay, so here we are in Reaper and I got a totally blank project. I go up here, I go to project templates and I open my film edit template and it will open something here. I like to save my project in my SSD drive and then we'll call it post-production edit. Some people like to put dates and things like that, but I don't and I'll show you later why I don't do this. And then make sure you come here and make sure everything's in order before you bring anything in. So usually the audio would be in 48K and 24 bit and and make sure you find out the frame rate of your video as well. So the easiest way to find the frame rate of your video, if you don't know, is to go to Finder, open your file with QuickTime, and then press Command and I, and it'll open the inspector, and it'll tell you the frames per second here, which is 2398, which is the same as 23976. Make sure to input that in here as well. Um, we don't need to really worry about all those other things. Nothing here I need. Some people take notes here. We don't need to do that right now. And we hit OK. Before we start, let's Let's also go to Finder and I'll show you a little bit how my projects are organized. So when I create a new project, it creates an RPP file. It creates this backup file. This backup file contains all the previous edits that I made. So it won't make a thousand of these, but if I click on this, it will go through all the different versions. I'll show you that once we have a few more versions. All my audio comes in here and then some extra backups go here. And these are the auto backups. Whenever I press Command and S, um, let's actually do it just to show you. Tap, 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 tap. I save, let's say, four times and now if I come back here and I open this it will show me like which one do you want to open and based on time I can open whichever one that I want we'll talk about all of this later and then this is my undo history if you want to know how to get to this workflow I'll link a video to Reaper Mania by Kenny Joya Kenny Joya is the best everybody knows if you, if you want to be good at Reaper watch Kenny Joya that's basically how I learned to do this stuff and he'll explain it in more detail than I am back to our project so you may be saying to yourself well this is really bare bones how do you edit a film in this many tracks this is just the minimum number of tracks that I need in order to start working. This is what every project I work on will have. But basically based on what my role is, I may not need all the extra tracks, right? If I'm only doing music on a track, why should I create a bunch of sound effects tracks on my project and just clutter up the space? So I'll show you in a second how I assemble my project once I know what my role is within the post-production. But for now, let's go through these. This is my video track. I drag my video to it. This is my guide track which is the audio from the video. So whenever you receive a video from your film editor, it will usually come with a stereo audio track. And on the right side, there will be all the dialogue. And on the left side will be all the temp music and temp sound effects. And so basically I have a stereo track here with both pans centered. That's how I will hear the dialogue in the center. And I hear the temp SFX and temp music in the center channel. Um, this is my reference track. For now, we don't need to worry about it. This is my record track. So I record audio into it. When I'm making music, I can just record some instruments or if I'm recording my computer audio let's say I want to bring in the audio from a news being read so that I can put it in the background of my track I can just record it off YouTube or whatever really quickly this is my sound design track again we'll get to that later this is my work tracks this is just kind of like my playground right whatever I put in here won't end up in the final project but it's just for me to kind of do some sound design just kind of experiment with what BG's work the final track is my storage bin and that's where I will start store ideas that I've scrapped temporarily or permanently. So this is the bare minimum of what I need. And then after that, I just come and assemble my project. So I select my last track and then I right click and I go insert track from template. So here I have a bunch of templates. So I have my SFX edit group. So if I'm doing SFX editing for a film, I just click on this and it will bring all the SFX editing tracks that I need. Let's say I'm also working on the BGs. So let's bring the BG edit group as well. Well, let's bring in all of them. Why not? So I'm going to bring in my music. Now music's down here. I'm going to bring in my dialogue. Uh, and I'm going to bring my Foley in as well. If I bring in everything, I will end up with 143 tracks. And that's before I've done anything. So that's why I assemble it in parts. Because if I'm not working on the Foley, I don't need to bring in the Foley, right? So I don't need to create a template and then go and carve out what I don't need. And if I ever want to bring it into a project, I don't need to create them later. I can just bring it in at any time. If suddenly it turns out that I am doing Foley for this template, I just go here and I'll 
I'll bring it in. So I'll talk a little bit about these folder structures. So I have my sound effects bus, 16 tracks. Now you will notice that they're in a different track layout because while I SFX edit, I never put any plugins on. And that's because mixers usually don't want you to give them processed sound effects, right? They want to process them afterwards. So if I'm creating a sound and I put a reverb on it, then the mixer won't be happy with that because they want to create the reverb and whatever reverb they put on the sound effects, they will create a similar thing for the dialogue as well. So usually I just give them the raw bare bones tracks that are just correctly edited and synced to picture. That's the job of the editor is just to put the sounds to sync and edit them and make sure they're not clipping. That's really all. So my sound effects are just 16 tracks. Then we get to my BG master and my BG masters is two sets of eight tracks. And the way that works is odd numbered scenes go on ABG. So, um, you know, scene one, scene three and scene five are up here and then scene two, scene four are down here and so on. Then I have my Foley tracks again, eight Foley tracks. Then I have my music master and that's again, eight tracks. But with music, I will use some plugins because again, it's up to me to at least a little bit mix my tracks together. You know, if I record a track, I may want to EQ it and compress it. That's not something that mixers frown upon. They, they definitely don't want you to just send them raw audio files and then have to mix music while they mix a film, right? So you can put plugins on your music. And then I have some software instruments. So I have play, which is for my orchestral sounds. I have labs, which is kind of more of an experimental free plugin. I definitely recommend you check it out. And then I have my flow motion, which is my synthesizer. So these are my top three software instruments. This A means that they are automatically armed when I click on them. Then I have my dialogue and my dialogue is eight tracks for dialogue and eight strip tracks. And I'll tell you later what those do. And as you can see, I have a bunch of effects here and they're all disabled. These are just the common kind of denoising tools. I put them here as a way of just quickly accessing them, right? So if I have a dialogue track here and I need to mouth to click it, I can just command C it over here, open here and press command V and it'll be there. By the way, if your project is really big and hard to navigate, you can press tilde and it will minimize everything. Up here, you will see all the buttons that I press and all the modifiers. So I got shift, control, option or alt and command. Some of the hotkeys I'll use will be the default. Some of them wouldn't be. For example, I have alt and H to just hide everything when I want to really edit. I have control and M for when I want to bring in my mixer just on the side. And then whatever track I click on comes here and my master track is here just to give me kind of a visual reference of my metering. But if I don't need anything to be here, I will get rid of it. Finally, I got this toolbar. I'll show you how this works. This is for showing and hiding tracks. So let's say I am working on all aspects of a film where it's still can get really cluttered. So I have this toolbar up here and this toolbar just automatically hides and shows my tracks. So let's say I want to hide my dialogue. I hit this DX, it'll hide it. My BGs, I hit it, it's gone. I hit it again, it's back my sound effects and so on. If you want to know how to do that, this is a trick I learned from John Tidy of the Reaper blog. So I'll put a link up here. It's quite easy to do. We're not going to spend time on it right now. And this is a way of kind of like decluttering my space. It's really important to have full access to all the screen real estate you have. So you don't want to have a cluttered project that is hard to navigate because it just makes it that much less fun to work on films. So that's it for today. This is just about how to do templates. In the next video, I'll show you how to bring in a video, how to spot it, how to create markers. And I'll talk a little bit about how to optimize the workflow so that uh, you can really utilize your whole screen uh, real estate wise and not have any kind of not have windows pop in and out of your way. But thanks for watching this one. Leave me comments. Let me know how this video helped you. Let me know what in the post production pipeline you're unclear on and I'll try to do videos specific for those. And uh, yeah, like subscribe, do all that crap that everybody tells you to do. You know how YouTube works. See you later.